and, and close. Public television has brought Fred Rogers close to millions of children and to their neighborhoods. But he's not all that comfortable being a celebrity, being famous. But there are so many who grew up with him, like these students at Yale. They respect him, admire him. They love him. Well, am I ever glad to be in this neighborhood. <laughs> There's some very young ones. Freshmen. And you, freshmen. <laughs> I just wonder how, how they might feel about seeing somebody that they've seen on television. So many children have said to me, how do you get out? <laughs> it seems strange to see Fred outside of a TV because that's where we know him best. After this familiar opening shot of the neighborhood model, uh, Fred takes us inside his TV house. The first part of the show is set here. Then, after he's changed into his comfortable clothes, Fred talks to us, shows us things, explains them. He gets us interested. I want to show you something. Then at some point, Fred usually turns on the toy trolley that takes us to a fantasy land he calls the neighborhood of make-believe. It's an imaginary kingdom, unusual place populated by people, by several costumed characters, and puppets. It's slightly surrealistic with landmarks we've come to know over the years. Just about anything can happen here. Uh, for instance, no one questions that a shy tiger lives in a clock or that a real live woman named Lady Aberlin is his best friend. Thanks. Most children eventually catch on to the fact that Mr. Rogers is the man behind the puppets. He's the voice of Daniel Striped Tiger. He's the stuffy King Friday and Queen Sarah, too. Fred's also Henrietta Pussycat, X the Owl, and a very feisty Lady Elaine Fairchild. I mean, men are really good for something. At the end of each day's trip to make-believe, the trolley comes and takes us through the tunnel again, back to the reality of Fred's living room. And once we're back there, uh, sometimes Fred talks about what just happened in make-believe, what it meant uh, before going on with the rest of the show. There are many things we've come to expect from Fred, like walking from his living room to his kitchen. He usually stops at the aquarium to feed the fish. Fish are important, too. All of you are fish, yet each one of you is different. Oh, it's and Mr. McFeely, the speedy delivery man, comes to visit. He brings packages and other surprises. Oh, thank you. Occasionally, Fred goes on field trips to meet people like the people in our neighborhoods. On the show, Joe Negri runs a music shop. Joe's a jazz guitarist, been a neighbor for years. Hi, Joe. Hi, Fred. <laughs> I've enjoyed this toy piano. Oh, thank you. One time, Fred took us to a pretzel factory. We learned about pretzels. In these short documentary segments, Fred shows how many of our favorite childhood things are made. Then the fingers will pick it up and twist it into a pretzel. I've never seen anything like that. To end every show, Fred changes back into his more formal clothes and heads out the door. I'll be back next time. Bye. Fred has made all his programs in Pittsburgh at station WQED. His own company, Family Communications Incorporated, is there too, and includes many of the people who helped Fred put together these national television shows. He still writes all the scripts himself and creates all the songs. The jazz pianist Johnny Costa is always in the studio with Fred. He's the neighborhood's musical director. And that can have a fermata. It's the only time in the whole song that we used it. It's intriguing, isn't it? Okay, Fred's programs are filled with music. Uh, sometimes his songs tackle unusual topics like uh, the fear of going down the drain or celebrating how each person's body is special. Some are fancy on the outside. Some are fancy on the inside. Everybody's fancy, everybody's fine. Your body's fancy, so is mine. 
Fret songs have a lot of fans, including Peggy Charon. She's president of Action for Children's Television. Mr. Rogers uses music in a very interesting way. He really gets the message across through the songs. I think that pacing is part of that. It, it's slow enough so you can really hear it. And the first time I heard Mr. Rogers on television, he was singing. He was singing that song about your body and my body, and I was in the kitchen making something, and I thought she was a singing psychiatrist on television for children. And in a way, he, um, he has such an understanding of how children work that, that he is sort of a singing psychiatrist when children most need one. Only boys can grow up to be the daddies. Everybody's fancy, everybody's fine. Your body's fancy, and so is mine. I, I admire everything he does. I think if I chose that which I loved the most about his work, it would be his music, his lyrics and music. Joan Gans Cooney is the founder and president of the Children's Television Workshop, which produces Sesame Street. It's the only other major American television program made for preschoolers. One time, Mr. Rogers visited Big Bird in that other neighborhood on PBS. We were saying when we started that we were interested in the cognitive development of children, primarily. Letters, numbers, preparing them for school. I think Fred would have said that he was interested in the affective development of children, the psychological, emotional development of children. So we saw us as, as operating more in two different spheres. So I think the two shows in some ways are closer, but still extremely complementary. And children deserve those two shows. When parents say, I don't let my children watch television, I always say, let them watch an hour and a half a day. I can give you a good hour and a half that will help your children. You are my friend. You're special to me. You are the only one like you. Like you, my friend. I like you. You know, I must be an emotional archaeologist because I keep looking for the roots of, of things, particularly the roots of behavior and why I feel certain ways about certain things. Mr. Rogers' roots are in southwestern Pennsylvania, the small town of Latrobe. It's also the home of Arnold Palmer and Rolling Rock Beer. Well, of course, it's the garden spot of the world, as Lady Elaine Fairchild would say. It's a good small town. Fred was born on March 20th, 1928. His parents were James and Nancy Rogers. He had a very comfortable childhood in a big red brick house near the top of Weldon Street. He was an only child until he was 11. Then his parents had... One of the most important somebodies in Fred's childhood was his grandfather. And my grandfather played the, the violin. And I remember he would play uh, this song. Play gypsy, dance gypsy, play while you may. Play gypsy, tis a lovely day. I remember learning that to, to please him. And we called him Ding Dong. That was Mr. McFeely. And uh, you know we've named Mr. McFeely for my grandfather McFeely. And I was named for him. His name was Fred Brooks McFeely. And my name is Fred McFeely Rogers, the middle part of which is speedy delivery. <laughs> Music was a very important part of Fred's childhood. Music was my first language. I was uh, and at times scared to use words. I didn't want to be a bad boy. I didn't want to show people that I was angry, or rather tell them but I could show it through you know, the way I would play on the piano. I, I, I could literally laugh or 